and uh, I met uh, Ilan at ISB Indian School of Business, and uh, I, I felt that Ilan was very calm, very composed. But when you talk with him, he will always speak great about you. But when you actually start talking, and when you actually understand the kind of depth that Dr. Ilan has, you'll be blown away. This is uh, what I felt, Dr. Ilan, honestly speaking. It's not an exaggeration, but this is a fact that uh, you know I could make out. And uh, when you have invited me to uh, Rela Hospital to understand the business problems, I felt as if I came to a five-star hotel, not a hospital. I was like, did Ilan actually invite me to a five-star hotel or hospital? That is how good uh, Rela Hospital was and uh, the kind of exposure that we as a team have received thanks to uh, Dr. Ilan and uh, yeah, Dr. Ilan's team. It's, you know, a tremendous. And thanks to that domain knowledge that we have accrued, we could accomplish a specific AI-related solution. And uh, on that, I would uh, ask a few questions to you, Dr. Ilan. Uh, thank you, Barani, for inviting me for this interview. And uh, thank you for your compliments to me and for the hospital. Um, yeah, of course, the hospital looks like a five-star facility and uh, we do provide high-end care to uh, local patients, uh, patients across India and uh, many patients from many countries, actually. So there is a need for uh, providing high-quality care and uh, we are trying to achieve that. Uh, thank you for visiting us and um, the exposure I have had with you and your team, I learned a lot within a few months time uh, because um, even though I have the domain knowledge, I don't have much of experience in uh, how you do uh, AI, how it's going to be useful in healthcare industry. So I learned a lot in the brief experience that I have encountered with your team. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ilan. Uh so the first question is, as CEO of Rela Hospitals, no wonder you are paying attention to finer nuances as well. Because all the while I've looked at uh, a lot of business problems which people asked us to solve, wherein they were majorly focusing on patients and emergency wards, et cetera. But for a change, you were also focusing on the bounce rate. You are not just looking at the patient's dissatisfaction as in the you know, operation theater and things of that kind, but you are also giving importance to the minute of the thing, such as if the patient walks with the prescription uh, to the pharmacy, yeah. mm -hmm. then... Oh, so sorry, I was running. Yeah. Uh, if... if uh, the people in pharmacy say that we don't have these medicines, then patient would be dissatisfied, right? And that you termed it as a bounce, as bounce rate basically during our discussion. Mm -hmm. So can you throw some light on why did you feel that that component was very important, Ilan? Yeah, before uh, I became a doctor or I became a CEO, I was a patient attender and I was a patient in many occasions, like all of us. Whenever you go to any shop, whether it's a pharmacy or it's any grocery shop, if you go stand there for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then you come to know some of the items are missing. And if it happens repeatedly, the chance of you going to that location next time is very, very low. You understand? It's a human psychology, which means that it's important for me as a CEO of a hospital to ensure that we need to provide high quality service and good experience to all the people reaching to various departments in the hospital. One of the areas is pharmacy, where most of the patients, if you see uh, 800 to 1,000 patients per day, 50, 60% of the patients would need some medicines to take home. It's really important for us to understand what is being prescribed, what is being available in the pharmacy, so that we are able to provide what is written there in the prescription. So when a patient comes to our pharmacy, say there are five medicines prescribed, even if one medicine is not available, 
This is going to cause a huge discomfort to the patient because they have to go to another pharmacy outside. They have to wait for another half an hour to get that particular medicine. That's point number one. Second thing is, uh, if you look at the quality of medicines in some of the areas which may not be as standard as we would want to give to our patients. So there are two is issues we need to address. And third point, obviously, if you don't sell something, there is a revenue loss for the hospital also. So there are many things involved in terms of bounce rate. And that's what I'm very keen on addressing those issues. Bounce rate is one of the few parameters, many parameters what we observe while managing inventory in the pharmacy. At the end of the day, bounce rate, high bounce rate will directly impact patient experience and patient care. That's why I focus more and more on bounce rate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very well said, Dr. One more question uh, around this is, Dr. Ilan. Hospitals in India especially are not adopting to AI quickly. They are taking their own sweet time. While the entire world is talking about AI, a lot of cancer prediction models are built in the past. And we have also, uh, we actually built a cancer prediction model in the past. Uh, but when we look at When we look at uh, you know uh, Indian hospitals, they are not uh, you know moving very fast. They are very slow in terms of AI adoption. What might be the reason? Can you throw some light on that? I'm sure um, there are many reasons, uh, uh, Barney. Um, healthcare itself is a very complex um, uh, area, unlike uh, many other industry. There are too many vari variables. Uh, for example, if you have um, 200 patients within the hospital admitted, another 800 to 1,000 uh, outpatients coming to our hospital, each one comes with a different set of problems. And then we are having 1,500 to 2,000 employees dealing with a different group of patients, offering different service, which include a number of many doctors from many specialties. For example, if you go to a restaurant or IT sector, I think it's, I would say this is, um, healthcare is more unpredictable events each and every day. You understand? Other industries, of course, it's unpredictable. But if you look at the percentage of unpredictability overall, healthcare is more complex because there are so many events, unpredictable events happens each and every day. Because we don't know what kind of customers, I, I'm using the word customers because for people to, for people to understand easily, what kind of patients we are going to get today, we don't know. If if thousand patients are walking in, you wouldn't know what disease they're going to come in, how many days they're going to stay, stay how many, uh, what kind of operations they're going to undergo in the next few days. It's, everything is totally unpredictable. I would say 60 to 70% of the work for the next one week as a CEO, I don't know what I'm going to do, what kind of patients we are going to cater. That's the complexity we are uh, facing each and every day. One is um, the, there are many problem statements we need to address in the healthcare industry. Uh, to answer your question directly, we don't have direct interaction with experts like you to solve our problems. I would say that's the biggest challenge. You understand? People comes people always comes with a solution where they have found somewhere approaches saying that there is a solution. Please take it. You understand? But as an institute, I will be having some peculiar problem to address. If you look at top three problems, the solution what I'm being offered by AA or A expert will be in the top six or top seven. So I'm more concerned with the top five problems. You understand? Okay. So if the AA can provide a solution for my top three problems, I would be happy to pick up. Yeah. You understand? That's one of the reasons. And each one, each hospital is functions differently. The, the top three problems, or what I'm having will be different from what the neighborhood hospital is having. Right? Their problems will be completely different. So that's one of the reasons uh, I would suggest. Of course, I agree with you. Healthcare is a little bit slow in adapting technology and all this stuff. I think we are uh, traditionally using something to uh, routinely do. Uh, even if COVID wasn't there, I don't think many people would have started using Zoom technology. I understand that's a kind of... Uh, mindset we have but i'm sure once it's easily available easily accessible and easily affordable i'm sure healthcare will easily uh, take up a solution very quickly 
especially when we think that's going to solve our top three uh, problems as soon as possible. Absolutely, Dr. Nand, well said. So very soon, Indian healthcare system will start adapting and adopting AI. So the way I see. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. But the thing is, uh, whether um, the hospitals are interested to adapt or not, we will be encroached in day-to-day -day practice. For example, we never thought 20 years back that they will be using mobile phone for everything. We'll be transferring money. We thought mobile phone will be used only for making phone calls. Okay. Now we, we, can't, we can't live without a mobile phone. Yeah, it's, it's not like we were willing to do all these things. It's just enter into our life without our knowledge. I'm sure the same thing will happen in healthcare. AI will enter into the healthcare system without the knowledge of people working in the healthcare. In five, 10 years time, we'll be fully using AI without our knowledge. That's what's going to happen, I, I predict. Absolutely. Absolutely. agree with that completely, Dr. And one final question is, uh, the solution that we have built for uh, Rela hospitals we could achieve an accuracy of uh, around 97%. And it's you know ready to be deployed at uh, your premise in your uh, cloud environment. So uh, can you talk something about that, Dr. Lan? Were you really happy with the solution? Uh, do you really feel that that's going to help uh, Rela Hospital, especially the pharmacy department? Yeah, I just, I just wanted to tell the problem statement what uh, we were facing before um, uh, talking to you, maybe six months ago, I think. Inventory management in healthcare is one of the a very complex um, area, actually. I thought one of the pain area for us, not only for us, any hospitals for that matter, because um, I would say around uh, 20 to 20 percentage, 20 to 25 percentage of the total revenue uh, comes to uh, pharmacy or something related to pharmacy or our expenditure goes through the pharmacy route. So it's a very highly expensable uh, area in a healthcare industry. So what happens is, uh, as I said early, it's a totally unpredictable uh, pattern of uh, patients we are uh, facing in each and every day, which means we have to ensure that the medicines available in the pharmacy is enough to cater all these patients coming to our setup. Unfortunately, it's very, very difficult to predict in a, in a, in a manual manner to, to find out what kind of patients we'll be getting today and tomorrow and what kind of medicines we have to stock. That's, that's very unpredictable. This is the area we thought A will be useful. That's what we spoke. And then uh, you have come up with a fantastic solution. So what we have done is um, forecasting. So predicting the inventory value for the future based on existing data set of last four, four and a half five years. That's what we have done it. So we have gone through all the data available in the last four, four and a half years. And there were so many variables that we have gone through, um, including uh, there'll be a lot of seasonal variations, number of specialty changes. We have even looked into the kind of uh, disease pattern our hospital has encountered. encountered. Even if you look at uh, uh, seasonal variations in um, um, summer time, you will have different pattern of disease. In winter time, dengue will come, flu will come, something else will come. So these kind of patterns, uh, your model was able to predict. And um, interestingly, even I was very surprised to see that you are able to accurately predict more than 97, 98%. Uh, we have deployed temporarily your solution. Uh, and then we found that it, it, the predictive value is uh, pretty high. Um, I, I think it's going to be very useful. A is going to play a major role uh, in uh, healthcare, uh, especially in a pharmacy, inventory, where the things are very complex, it's going to help a lot. Of course, there are many, many areas like research and all this stuff, it's going to play a major role. Disease prediction, all these all this areas are uh, uh, going to use A very soon. I think pharmacy inventory management is one area where A can definitely help. And I'm sure you have uh, proven that in our center. We'll be happy to use your product. Um, yeah, but any, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ilan. That means a lot, actually, coming directly from you. Because while we were doing the presentation of this solution, you were able to find out minute you know, mistakes, small mistakes that we have done. Statistically, you are able to point out and say that this word that you have used, confidence interval, you know, it's not confidence level, it should be confidence interval. 
I, I was surprised to look at your statistical knowledge then. <laughs> no, no, I think I'm very weak in statistics. It was just luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ilan, for your time and uh, the nice words that you had. And I'm hoping that the engagement will continue and we'll be able to solve a lot of interesting uh, business problems using AI through your support and your domain knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bernie. Wish you all the best. We should work uh, together more and more so that healthcare can adapt more AI solutions very soon in the future. Thank you very much for you and your team. Thank you.